Hello guys. Welcome back to Roots and Refuge Farm. We're about to head out to the garden to take a look at it, kind of catch you up on some things there. I realize I haven't done a garden tour for the last few weeks. Once because I was out of town for the better part of two and a half weeks. And then when I got home, it has literally rained this entire week. I'm not exaggerating where like our town is flooding. I realized an oversight in that I didn't have any rain gauges. The one I had last year was glass and it froze and broke. I got some plastic ones and I'm gonna go stick them out in different places in the garden to be able to gauge the rain. I, I wished I'd had them this week because I'd really love to know how much rain we got. And I don't. As soon as I actually have the time, I'm gonna shoot you guys such a thorough garden tour. <laughs> but today we'll do a little overview. See ya, have a good weekend. Look at the pollinators loving these zinnias. Beautiful. Let's pop in here and look at the peppers. Still getting strawberries, which is amazing. I think the shade cloth has really helped this production keep up. It's so cool. I mean, I love it, the kids love it. But I can't tell you how many people have come here. You know, and, and, and of course I walk people through to see the garden. And when they see that, they're like, strawberries! And I say, help yourself. And so many people, their eyes get so big and they go, this is so flavorful, it tastes so good. And I love having snacky things like that in garden spaces that people can actually come in and experience. So look at the peppers, look how much they've grown. They're probably about 18 to 20 inches tall, some of them. I mean, some are shorter, but that's also to do with variety. So this bed, is all um, jalapenos. Got our early fruits. I'm gonna let them get just a little bit bigger. And I currently do not have these supported. They're not like falling over or anything. But my plan was to put some posts in the corner and like weave twine or something through here to hold them up. Right now they're going pretty steady and so I don't think it's terribly necessary. We're starting to get a pretty good deal of fruits on these so some of these beds are mixed um, like this has multiple different kinds of peppers in here and some of these beds are all the same like this one you can see that there's multiple different kinds like just different shapes of leaves I mean obviously they're all pepper leaves but look at that there's a little variegated pepper right there that would be the fish pepper the other day we were out here and Will was weeding in that garden and I was weeding in here. And I looked up and said, is it raining out there? And he said, no. So I put my head back down. We put our headphones back in. You know, two minutes later I get down and the bottom just falls out. And he looks up at me, he goes, how did you know that? I said I could smell it. <laughs> because you know that smell? I was reading this thing that was saying, we are so sensitive to that smell because essentially like it's a thing with humans that that chemical compound it's geosmin it's this this chemical that's released out of the soil when the rain comes and we are so sensitive to that smell kind of as a kind of as a, a an innate ability to find fertile places to grow i just thought it was interesting i do have a really strong sense of smell and I can definitely smell the rain before it comes. Can you? Here's another bed. This is all the same. Um, this one I think is the not a pino bed. I may have a mixed up but I'm pretty sure this is the not a pino bed. This has all of the not spicy peppers. We separated them. One's on one end and one's on the other. And here these are all ground cherries which I'm super excited about and I got to show you something really cool. There's, well, this isn't the cool thing. There's this little crystal in the bed and I keep seeing it, seeing this and thinking it's a ground cherry that fell off. And for some reason, instead of taking it away, I keep putting it back in the same spot. I'm gonna put it back. That's what's in the walkway is, is quartz, but anyway. So far we've, we've only had one ripe ground cherry. We're on the edge. Now I made a video this week of harvesting five gallons of green beans and I've been picking tomatoes by the small handful, which is awesome. I showed you I've got lots of peppers set. 
Um, things are just starting to trickle in, but the like overwhelming abundance, probably about two weeks out, we'll be pulling a ton of food in. This dahlia bed is opening up, looking beautiful. I'm so excited about this. I didn't end up finding any other dahlias I loved. Some of my other beds are empty, but if I don't get to it till next year, that's okay. I was committed on these gardens taking a few years to get really as established where I want them, especially for perennial things like dahlias. Now, a little update on this tunnel. So this is my tunnel I'm planning on turning into a cut flower tunnel. And we just haven't had the time. We've got these uh, boards here. We're gonna build some very shallow raised beds. And since we didn't have time, we had all everything in here volunteered. Like this holy basil, these zinnias, these cucumbers, all these sunflowers. And you know, since we weren't in any rush, we weren't getting around to rebuilding it. We just let this stuff grow. It's not hurting anything. We watered in here, nasturtiums. But I saw something that really excited me. So this is the space where last year we received soil that had a contaminant in it that killed all our nightshades. It was very devastating. Um, it's why I'm so excited about all of my green tomatoes down there because I think maybe I harvested like less than 25 like good tomatoes last year. It was primarily on the plant up by the front by the house. It was such a disappointment. So what we had deduced was that there were was grazon contamination in our soil. I shared this whole process. And the thing that we did consistently to try to remediate this soil was one, we used activated charcoal and mixed it in that pulls toxins. We did do some micro remediation, which is sprouting mushrooms and then taking the mycelium and spreading it through. Um, and we sprayed worm teas on here. Now we grew things like sunflowers and wheat that do pull toxins. Uh, but I really think the activated charcoal and the worm teas are to credit for the benefit. And I saw something in here since we've let all these volunteers grow that has been massively encouraging to me. Well, there's a bunch of weeds back here, but here, these are actually volunteer ground cherries. Now this is where the ground cherries were last year. Most of them just shriveled up and completely died. Volunteer ground cherries, volunteer ground cherries. So Grazon is an herbicide that is put on grass crops to kill the things that typically grow like out in pastures. And it targets things like nightshades and legumes because some of those are some of the things that, that most riddle pastures that people who are trying to grow grass crops consider to be a nuisance. And the problem with that is, is when it's sprayed on grass crops, those grass crops are then harvested and fed as hay to cows. And then the manure from those cows, that, that grazon still exists in their system and it goes into the manure. And then when that manure ends up getting sold to composting operations or the manure itself gets sold to people who put it on their garden, it still kills nightshades and legumes in a field maybe a wild nightshade would be a nuisance but in a garden it's a tomato or pepper or a ground cherry and uh, seeing those ground cherries growing healthily and thriving tells me that what we did in the soil has worked one thing that i've suggested for people to do if they're bringing soil in to make sure it's not contaminated is to sprout beans in it because beans so quickly show damage um, whereas my nightshades took i don't know when i transplanted them in they took like three or four weeks to really start shriveling and showing the damage when we planted beans in that contaminated soil they they came up and then they shriveled up and died within a week and so any soil we've brought in since then we've sprouted beans in kind of as a canary in the coal mine to be able to test it before we spread it all over the whole garden seeing those nightshades thriving here is really encouraging to me to know that one year later I think that this soil is actually usable for the things that um, it really wasn't usable for a year ago. My plan is to still grow cut flowers here primarily um, and fill this space up with low beds, add some more soil. 
and we will continue to put worm casting tea and build the biome of this soil to add life and organic health to it. And I think that maybe in the world full of toxicity that we are just having to navigate that this is something that we should just share openly. I mean, I would like, if, if you're talking to anybody who's gardening, especially if they're bringing in large loads of soil, um, sprouting beans in it is definitely a, a good step. And if, I mean, already this year, I've probably seen no less than like 40 pictures of people saying, what's going on with my plants? And it's that same very gnarly stunted curling that I saw last year that ultimately caused so much harvest. Uh, but if we can tell people, one, activated charcoal to help pull the top toxicity, I think micro-remediation and, and mushroom compost or mycelium can definitely help both clean the soil, remediate the soil, and feed the healthy biome, and then two, supporting that biome with uh, things like worm casting tea and compost teas, it's not hopeless. And that, that was the thing that, that got me more than anything last year was that just intense feeling of hopelessness. To be like, wow, if I don't have the ability to grow a home garden, that's, I mean, that's a lot of the freedom and the security that I feel in food security is, is in that ability. And if that goes away, it was very jarring. We have a worm farm now. You know, we've, we've begun practicing making biochar to do activated charcoal. And um, it, it's, I want that knowledge to go out. It's been quite a journey in this wild and overgrown space, but it's going to be extraordinary again. I think it's beautiful now. And look, actually, I missed this. I got a cucumber. <laughs> That's nice. Anytime I get a little bonus cucumber, that makes me real happy. I was about to start talking about this and realized I still had my mouth full of cucumbers. So I'm going to stop eating this so I can tell you about the gardens. Um, our contour rows are working. You can see this. There's probably like a few inches of water in here. Um, they've all got standing water in them. We knew we were going to have to battle the weeds in here, and it, we are. We're just kind of weed eating the rows. It's kind of hard to do on weeks like this when there's so much rain and it's hot when it's not raining, and so just the grass grows really fast. But this is going to end up being very productive. It might not be the prettiest, but I think it's going to be very productive. The potatoes are all up. I think I may grow wheat here over this winter. I think this space, I'm, I may end up doing that. I'm not sure yet. Still kind of working that out. Here, um, the next planting of tomatoes. They're looking really good. I just pruned these yesterday and tied up what needed to be tied up. This one I planted first, so they're about twice as big. And I'm getting ready to replant the other sides of these. I don't know what with yet, but still deciding. Everything is extremely saturated and squashy right now. So beautiful. Look at that flower. That's something. It's a canna. It's gorgeous. So yeah. I think we uh I think we're good on potatoes. What do you think? <laughs> so these are laying out in here drying and uh Probably another day or two. It's been so wet. It started digging and then rain and rain and rain and you're really not supposed to dig potatoes out of mud. But there were like eight days of rain on the forecast and they were pretty ready to come out. The plants had really died back and I was concerned they were gonna start rotting or sprouting. So so on one of the dry days, I had dug a, I had dug a couple of the short rows. Will got in there and dug a whole bunch of them. They're in here drying, but it's been so wet. I'm talking like 100% humidity with all this rain coming down. That today, this afternoon, it's rained all morning hard. Um, today it's actually, I think, drying these out. So I'd like to give them a couple of days to really dry, and then I'll move them into the storage. We don't have a root cellar right now. We don't have the best like optimum storage for things like that. But last year we were able, able to eat on the potatoes for several months before they started sprouting really bad. And the ones that sprouted we saved and planted and that's what these came from. All right. I've got more seeds in the ground in some of these places. So this side doesn't look like a whole lot. But over here is looking really lovely. I've got more dragon tongue bush beans. I've already harvested a lot from these and I've got more that need to be harvested. Um, 
The banana peppers are looking prime. Check that out. We are snacking on cherry tomatoes every day, but the thing that excites me the most, well, this excites me, not the most, but cucamelons. This, these are my Kajari melons, and they're got blossoms on them. They're starting to climb. Once it gets hot, this okra will just explode and take off. It's still pretty small now, but as soon as, as soon as it really will heat up, it's been cool for us. But this, this is my, <laughs> I'm so proud. Look, look at this. I'm gonna put my half-eaten cucumber in my pocket so you don't have to look at it, but look at this. So I, I posted some pictures and I had a lot of people say, what's up with the curled up leaves? Isn't that a bad sign? Um, it's just a sign of stress. And when we've gotten several inches of rain this week, that definitely is gonna cause some stress, especially going from really like rainy to very, very hot. Oh, that's bindweed right there. That's no good. No, thank you. I've got several one pound at plus tomatoes on these vines right now. Just lots of lovely clusters. I did find a gnarly big hornworm on here and fed him to the turkeys the other day. I need to get the black light out to search these over. If you don't know this, hornworms are the big, like tobacco worms, some tobacco worms are actually a different kind, but hornworms is what gets on tomatoes and they're the big green caterpillars and they will eat a plant to sticks overnight once they get real big but the way they get on your plants a lot of people will say different things i've heard people say like put eggshells around the bottom and like different things that may help with some stuff but in the case of hornworms a, a moth comes and lays the egg on the plant and the egg actually hatches on the plant and in the larval stage it actually eats through and then it goes into chrysalis and that drops down into the soil and then comes out and emerges as a moth. And one big hornworm can just completely destroy a plant and they'll do stuff like this, like eat a little bit of the fruit, ruin it. Um, that one wasn't too bad so I haven't pulled it off yet. But those guys actually glow under a black light so the best organic way to deal with them is to come out at night with a black light and just shine it on there and ideally find them when they're really small before they damage your plant. But yeah, I've got huge fruits on here when i find hornworms uh, the thing that makes me know i need to look for them is you'll find their poops like they look like little black grenades but then beyond that will be the hornworm damage which actually that was part of what i saw but a lot of times you'll see like sticks that are missing their leaves um, blossoms will be eaten off i'm not seeing a lot of hornworm damage yet other than that one but i'm sure they're on here that's why i need to bring the black light out but yeah, we have loads of fruit. Some of these are showing some splitting, showing some spots. These are actually blushing a little bit. I mean, with as much rain as we've gotten, that's kind of to be expected. But even still, this looks amazing, don't you think? I come out every single day and just gawk at this after my terrible tomato year last year. This is just bringing me so much joy and anticipation. I think that this one is maybe the biggest one and then this one right here. Look at that. That's huge. Here the tomatillos are getting really loaded down and heavy. They're not quite split and open and ripe yet, but probably fairly close. So I know this wasn't really a full garden tour, but it was a quick overview, an update of sorts. It's been a different garden season for a lot of people. I'm hearing a lot of feedback. I love to take note of comments and conversations. I mean, here on the channel, as well as in like our Facebook group and in other gardening Facebook groups. And I'm hearing a lot of people saying that between things like contaminated soil and the really extreme weather and uh, drought in some places or drowning rains in the other places that a lot of people are dealing with unusual conditions. A lot of people are dealing with things. So if this is one of your first years gardening, I do want to encourage you that every gardening year can be completely different. I've gardened for a lot of years. I've been incredibly successful in the past. I've had years that I went out and harvested 50 pounds of tomatoes one day and went out a few days later and harvested another 50 pounds of tomatoes and just was inundated with harvest. And like I said, last year I had very, very little. And then this year we're back to 
having abundance and I've got all of those lovely tomatoes this is my first cucumber <laughs> so I was so excited about it it grew on a volunteer plant I've had issues with uh, pill bugs eating my seedlings and so I'm really behind I finally have cucumbers growing that are about this tall but uh, yeah I just every year can be different so if you are early on in gardening let, let me please be an encouraging voice to you that it, it's different every year and uh, we have to embrace our failures as well as our successes we have to just celebrate the process and don't just decide to grow a garden decide to become a gardener because even if something goes wrong or the conditions are difficult um, or you get dealt a bad hand if you're becoming a gardener all of those things can still grow you so harvest the wisdom and things and don't give up um, it's worth it to choose to engage and stick with it so cheers <laughs> i'm gonna finish my my only cucumber <laughs> thank you for hanging out with me today and all the days that you do i bless you until next time